Hi, I'm Congressman Kevin Kramer from the great state of North Dakota. Here in the House of Representatives, I serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee. But for longer than I've served on this committee with the broadest jurisdiction in Congress, I've been a member of the Congressional Western Caucus. As one of the most active caucuses here in Congress, we play a significant role in developing, advocating, and enacting policies important to Western and rural communities. North Dakota has a successful history and a bright future in a number of industries and boasts a wonderful quality of life for its citizens. Even if it gets a little cold in the winter, or maybe because it gets a little cold in the winter, I don't know. But we have agrarian roots that have been advantageous in our relatively new significant production of oil and natural gas as the number two producing state in the country right behind Texas. Okay, a long ways behind Texas, but we're number two. Yet, I'll note, it does take 36 Texans to do the job of one North Dakotan in the House of Representatives. North Dakota has adopted a new telecommunication technology across our rural prairie faster than most, and we play an outsized role in defending our nation with a high proportion of National Guard participation, two legs of the nuclear triad, and fast-growing unmanned aircraft systems deployment. It's easy to be proud to represent North Dakota. However, we've not been without our challenges, and many rest with the federal government getting in our way. While the Obama administration's waters of the U.S. rule certainly impacts far more than our farmers and ranchers, they stand to see particular economic burden with its implementation. Thankfully, the battle goes on in the courts and the Trump administration is working to change course. But I urge my colleagues to go further and enact into law more definitive definitions of what, and probably more importantly, what is not, a waters of the U.S., H.R. 1261, the Federal Regulatory Certainty for Water Act, is the proposal Congressman Mac Thornberry and I are advocating to provide the clarity and certainty our farmers, ranchers, and other stakeholders deserve. Many western states are also significant energy producers, and North Dakota in particular is a resource for coal, oil, natural gas, ethanol, and wind. We reclaimed our land temporarily disturbed by coal mining long before the federal government said anything about it. And... We continue to resist the federal government imposing its duplicative mediocrity on us in the development of oil and gas. Unfortunately, a Congressional Review Act resolution to block the Bureau of Land Management Waste Prevention or Venting and Flaring Rule failed by one vote in the U.S. Senate after passing in the House by a vote of 221 to 191. North Dakota is one of the few states with a gas capture plan and its longstanding resource conservation laws prevent waste. I appreciate the efforts of litigants against the Obama rule and the Trump administration's work to correct it, but the regulatory costs and compliance risks remain for now. Another critical effort in this space is to adopt H.R. 4239, the Secure American Energy Act, which includes provisions to enable states with established permitting and regulatory programs to manage federal permitting and regulatory responsibilities for oil and gas development on federal lands. Of unique interest to North Dakota, the bill also includes a provision preventing a duplicative federal permit from the BLM when a project is on non-federal land and there are less than 50% federal minerals. This will streamline the regulatory process, bringing more energy, jobs, and benefits to our country. Finally, I'd just like to touch on one other bill central to many struggles of the Western Caucus that I introduced with Representative Ron Kind, a Democrat from Wisconsin. The federal government is the largest landowner in the United States managing an estimated 660 million acres, or one-fourth of the total land area of the United States. A study conducted by the Government Accountability Office found that managing federal real property is an area of the federal government that is most susceptible to waste, fraud, and abuse of taxpayer money. Federal land managers often do not have a precise picture of exactly what lands the federal government owns, because there's not one current and accurate database of federal lands and their boundaries. A coinciding problem is the government wastes tax dollars by operating copious amounts of inaccurate and out-of-date inventories and more than 100 different property systems to report real property data. Simply put, the current system for tracking the federal government's real property is inefficient and redundant. This inefficiency should not be the case when one reliable, regularly maintained database is available through cutting-edge geographic information systems technology. That is why I introduced H.R. 2199, the Federal Land Asset Inventory Reform Act, also known as the FLARE Act, to authorize the Department of Interior to increase transparency and efficiency by conducting an inventory of its federal property holdings and integrating the findings into one database to track and manage property. 
the FLARE Act would improve data management to help eliminate fraud, waste, and redundancies. By adopting the FLARE Act, we can improve federal land management, resource conservation, and environmental protection, all while reducing land ownership conflict and saving taxpayer dollars in the maintenance of one efficient database. These are just some of the efforts I'm working on with my Western Caucus colleagues to improve the lives of North Dakotans, Westerners, and all Americans. Thank you, and God bless you.